Welcome to Transcended. So in this video we are going to go over synthetic division of polynomial functions. Okay, so if you've not watched the video on long division, I would advise you watch it before you, you get to talk about synthetic so that you understand that these guys are not even different. Alright, so basically as usual, for us to find the first factor, we need to find the value of a that can give us a zero for the function. So basically like I said, we're supposed to look at negative 1, positive 1, 2, and negative 2. But basically, we get to give priorities to negative 1 and 1 to see which one can give us a 0. So I'll start with 1. So when you say a function of 1 in such a case, it means that at every point where we have x, we'll put, negative, we'll put a 1. So we're starting with a 1. So it will be 6 minus 5 minus 17 plus 6. So 1 doesn't change anything about the function. So 6 minus 5 is what? So that's a 1, minus 17 plus 6. So this is predictable. The solution can be equal to 0. How about the function of negative 1? So where there is, whenever negative 1 is raised to an odd power, it becomes a negative. So it will be minus 6. Then where it is raised to, power, to an even power, nothing changes. So it will still be minus 5. Then at that point, 1 is an odd number. It will be plus 17, plus 6. So what do we have? Negative 6 minus 5 is negative 11, plus 7, 10, plus 6. So obviously that can give us a 0, okay, because we have bigger positive numbers. Okay, how about the function of 2? So if you put in a 2 there, at that point where there is x cubed to be 8, so we have 6 by 8 minus 5. 2 squared is 4, then minus 17x. So minus 17x, our x is 2, plus 6. So this is basically 6 by 8 is 48. 5 by 4 is 20. 17 by 2 is 34, plus 6. So the positives were 48 plus 6, which is a 54 then minus 54 for the negatives. So this is equal to 0. So what are we saying? We are saying x is equal to 2 is actually one of our factors. Okay, so unlike for long division where we said you're supposed to express it, express it in, in, in terms of a factor when dividing where you say this becomes x minus 2. Alright, but for synthetic division we're just going to work with the value of x itself that we found. So what we are saying, our value of x in this case is 2. The next step that you're supposed to do is get to write the coefficients of the, fu the, the function that you have. So the first coefficient is 6, followed by negative 5, followed by negative 17, followed by 6. So just like I mentioned in the first video, I said, whenever the powers are not decreasing in the right order, for example, if we had 6, x cubed plus 6. So in such a case, we are supposed to come up with imaginary coefficients in between so that a function looks like this. Okay, but in this case, we have third power, second, one, and zero. So it's fine. No need of us introducing the imaginary coefficients. So we just work with what we have. Okay, so what else do we get to do? We'll draw a line there. So what I've said is we've got our factor there, then we've indicated the, the coefficients of a function that we have. Okay. So now, the first step is to drop that. To drop the first coefficient down, then we'll be multiplying now. So 2 by 6 is 12. Then you'll be adding. So going down here, you add. You multiply what is down there with the 2 there. So 12 plus negative 5 is going to be a 7. Okay. Then 7 multiplied by 2 is going to be a 14. Negative 17 plus 14 is going to be a negative 3. Negative 3 multiplied by 2 is going to be a minus 6. So we have 0. So this proves that our remainder is equal to 0 and therefore tells us to say that 2 is a possible factor of the equation. So now... Remember the highest power that we had, we had x to the power 3. So we reduce the powers now. So this will become squared, this will become x, that will become just a constant. So with 
what we have now is we have x minus 2 as our first factor then we also have now 6x squared plus 7x minus 3 which has been determined using synthetic division so from this stage the other method now gets to apply okay so if you look at what we have you are able to factorize okay of course you can also work with synthetic division but I would advise at this stage since you have a quadratic function you know that it's possible for you to find the factors so you better do that and that would save your time so for the product we have minus 18 then for our sum we have uh, 7 so obviously what we expect is 9 and the negative 2 as our possible factors so this would be 6x squared plus 9x minus 2x minus what? 3 okay so at that stage what do we get to do? we need to factorize so there the highest common factor is 3x then we remain with 2x plus 9 divided by 3x is going to be a 3 then we need to make sure that what is there is also the same there so we factor out the negative one side we remain with positive that okay so basically our factors are 3x minus 1 and 2x plus 3 all right so let's try to indicate that now so basically factorizing what we had as our expression so we factorize this and it has given us that so we can say x minus 2 which is the first part there we now substitute that back so we have 3x minus 1 and 2x plus 3 so that is equal to 0 so as you might have guessed we, are, we expect to have three possible solutions because this is to the third power so if they ask you to factorize you can end at that point but for this case we're trying to find the exact values of x so x is equal to 2 so at that point if the negative one goes the other side it will become a positive and therefore x will be 1 over 3 then for that part our x is going to be negative 3 over 2 so we've answered the first question so 2x to the power 4 plus 7x to the power 3 minus 17x squared minus 7x plus 15 so that is our second question that we have so trying to find the value of x if you plug into the equation there to give us a 0 so I said preferably we start with negative 1 and 1 then get to 2 and negative 2 so basically let's start with a 1 so if you start with a 1 you have 2 plus 7 minus 17 minus 7 plus 15 so 2 plus 7 is 9 so minus 17 minus 17 so 17 plus 17 is what so you get the 3 there you had there you have a 20 you remain with a 4 so it's minus 24 plus 15 so 9 minus 24 is what so we can say 15 plus 9 to start with so that is going to be 24 minus 24 basically that is equivalent to a 0 so therefore x is equal to 1 is a possible factor it's a factor for that function so the next step what did we say we said you need to now come up with a table okay so drop the factors so the factor that we have is 1 then let's drop the coefficients we have 2 we have 7 we have minus 17 we have minus 7 and we have 15 there so we can start so the first step is to drop the 2 so here we are multiplying there we are doing that here we are adding going down so 1 by 2 is a 2 2 plus 7 is a 9 9 multiplied by 1 is what it's a 9 so now 17 minus 9 what basically do we have so we have a minus 8 so minus 8 multiplied by 1 is still minus 8 so negative 7 minus 8 is what so 7 plus 7 is 14 plus 1 is 15 so we have minus 15 minus 15 multiplied by 1 it's a minus 15 15 minus 15 is a 0 so what the value that you have at the end is the remainder okay so for the purpose of uh, our question what basically do we have so the first uh, value that we had is was x is equal to 1 in terms of a factor it is x minus 1 so what we have now 
the power that we had there, we had the power 4, so it will now be to the third power. So we have 2x to the power 3 plus 9x squared minus 8x minus 15 there. Okay. So what do we do at this point now? So at this point now, let's try to continue dealing with what we have. So basically this has reduced now to a cubic function. So we'll solve it in the same way that we solved the first one. So we have 2x to the third power plus 9x squared minus 8x minus 15. Okay, so we can try it out. So we have negative 1, we have 1, 2, and negative 2. Okay, so you can try it out. So I think 1 won't work out, negative 1 won't work out. Let's try negative 2. So we have 2, negative 2 to the third power plus 9 negative 2 squared minus 8 negative 2 minus 15 so for the first part that is a minus 8 by 2 it's a minus 16 so plus 9 multiplied by 4 so that is a 16 and that, that is a minus uh, 15 so basically what do we have now so of course the minus 16 and the 16 can cancel out and basically this can't cancel out with that so it has not worked out how about a positive 2 if we change the sign of uh, the 2 it becomes uh, let's make it positive so positive 2 positive 2 positive 2 so the first part is going to be a positive what a positive 16 then plus 2 squared is a 4 4 by 9 is what it's a 36 Okay, so we have a 36. Then 8 multiplied by 2 is going to be minus 16 and the minus 15 at that point. Okay, so that still won't work out. Okay, we can try out 1. We can try out 1. Or maybe let's try out positive 1. So 1 one one so basically what do we have at that point now so we have 2 plus 9 minus 8 minus 15 2 plus 9 is uh, 11 minus 8 minus 15 so this is actually we have more negatives than the positives okay let's see what we can try out again so let's try out the negative one we see So negative, negative, negative. So we have a minus 2. We have a positive 9. Then at that point we have a positive 8 and a minus 15. So 9 plus 8 is 17. 15 plus 2 is minus 17. So it's equal to 0. So negative 1 is our factor. That's agreed. Okay, despite us refusing it from the start. So negative 1 has worked. So we have negative 1 now. We can still use synthetic division. So for the coefficients, what do we have? So we have 2, we have 9, we have 8, 15. So 2, 9, minus 8, minus 15. So the first one, we drop it. It's a 2. Here we are multiplying. There we are adding going down. So negative 1 by 2 is a minus 2. 9 minus 2 is a 7. 7 by negative 1 is a minus 7. 8 plus 7 is what? It's a 15. Negative 15. Negative 15 multiplied by negative to the positive 15. Basically, we have a 0 there. That is our remainder. Okay. So after dividing, let's try to write now what we have. Okay. So remember, we started with x minus 1 as a first factor there. Yeah? So now, this one, the possible factor that we had determined was x is equal to negative 1, and it's the one that we used when dividing. So if you write that in terms of factor, it becomes x plus 1. So now after dividing, what do we have as our results? What we have as our results is see, 2, 7, minus 15. So remember, we were dividing a polynomial function, so this one will become a quadratic function. So we now have 2x squared 
plus 7x minus 15 okay so that's what we have so far at this point now what can we do we now have a quadratic function so we can go back with to the to the factorization method the product that we have there is a minus 30 the sum the sum is 7 factors we have 10 and a negative 3 so we have 2x squared the sum will be replaced by the factors so plus 10x minus 3x minus 15 okay so for the first part the highest common factor is 2x we have x plus 5 minus 3 we have x plus 5 so our factors are what let me erase what is at the bottom there so for the factors that we have we have 2x minus 3 then x plus 5 okay so let's try to substitute what we have now on top here so we have x minus 1 we have x plus 1 we have 2x minus 3 we have x plus 5 equal to 0 so we've answered the question of factorization so now solving the equation as usual all, you, all what you have to do is just equate the x to 0 so if you equate that to 0 x is equal to 1 x is equal to negative 1 x is equal to 3 over 2 and x is equal to minus 5 so these are the possible solutions to the quartz function that we have in this case okay and that's it for this video thank you very much for watching